Hi everybody, today Rotto runs through Snowdonia, which for gents and my money is one of the best worker placement games of 2012. Why? You may ask. Well, let me tell you, or let me show you more to the point, because that's what we do here. We show games. We don't tell games. Show, don't tell. Okay. In this game, players are running companies that provide labor for building the Snowdonia rail line up the Snowdonia mountain. And the line itself, you can see, is running around the perimeter of the entire board. Every single one of these cards represents a space going from the beginning, going up the mountain, and we have to clear out the rubble, and then we have to lay track, and we have to build stations every once in a while, and the game is over once we've laid track all the way up to the summit. And so how do we do that? By placing workers. This is a worker placement game, so let's get going. I've got, everybody starts with two workers, and I'm the first player, as evidenced by the big locomotive uh, marker, and I get to place. Now, up here is where all the worker placement spaces are, and we're playing a two-player game, so you can see we use these cards to scale the game appropriately. Nor in a three-player game, there's three spaces, but in a two-player game, there's two spaces. So I've got a bunch of spaces I could go, and where am I going to go? I think I will, let's see, as the first player, I'm going to go over here and grab myself a contract. Why? Because in a two-player game, only one contract can be grabbed per round, and contracts are very important. So that's why I've chosen this space. And later on, uh, these are the three contracts are out, I'll be able to get one of them. Now it's Jen's turn. She is going to place a worker. And what is she going to do? Let's see. I think she is going... To, she is going to collect some resources, which uh, takes place over here in this card. There's two spaces. She could put a worker in this space or this space. And either one of them will let her pick up three cubes, either iron, stone, or coal. But she's got to make a choice. Does she want to be the first player to go there, uh, grab the first spot, which means she would have first dibs, which guarantees she would get the only coal that is in the game right now, which is very important. Coal is life. Uh, and so does she want to be first or does she want to be second because if you come to this space you won't get first dibs but you do get to grab first player. So Jen would be first player next turn and that's what she's going to choose. She's going to take a risk that she won't get the coal but she will guarantee get first player. And now it's my turn. What do I want to do with my other worker? I think I will also come here and I will be the first person to grab some resources. And so Jen says shoot. Uh, so she's not going to be able to grab that coal, but she's going to grab first player. And now finally she has one more worker to place, and what's she going to do? Let's see. Well, she could. this one lets her start digging away the rubble that we have to clear. You know, all these brown cubes, we have to clear out all the rubble. She can do that. She can convert resources. She's going to pick up some resources. She could convert them into others. She could start laying track, but you can't lay track unless you've already cleared the rubble. So that doesn't make much sense. She could build stuff, but at the beginning of the game, you can't build locomotives. You can't do that yet. And you can't build stations until you've cleared the track up to get to a station. Hey, oh, that station's missing its rubble. Oopsie, let's fix that. There are four rubble there. And two rubble here. Okay, there we go. Fix that. Sorry about that. So she could also try to build, but again, she can't at the beginning because we haven't gotten to where we could build a station yet. She can't get a contract, so she is going to pass with her last action. She's going to pass. And now passing is not a bad thing in this game because you, you can score a lot of points by passing. But we've done all our placement. Now we will actually do the actions in order from left to right. So let's go. I was the first player here, so I get first dibs on resources. And you can see I get three cubes. The first one can be an iron or a stone. The second can be an iron or stone. My third cube can be an iron, stone, or coal. So I think with my three cubes, I will grab one of each. I'll grab an iron and a stone and a coal, the only coal. I could have grabbed two iron and a coal or two stone and an iron, but I could only grab one coal. And since it was there, I grabbed it while the grabbing was good. And Jen says, big surprise. So anyway, now she gets to go. She's just going to grab three iron, one, two, three. And remember, she also, more importantly, grabs the star player. Okay. Nobody dug, nobody's converting, nobody is laying track, nobody's building. I get a contract. Let's look at these contracts. There's always three of them available when you, when you first start around. And each one of these contracts does two things. It gives us a one-time use special ability. The special ability of this one is, at some point in the future when I lay track, I could use this card once and I would get to lay an additional track. It's like I get an extra turn for free, basically. It's as if I played another worker, effectively. This one is special. This one, if I play this, it prevents any other player from laying track, or, laying, um, or playing contracts. So if I can see, and, and the contracts are tinkered. Everybody knows what everybody's got. If, if Jen's gonna score really big off some contract, I could say, nope, I prevent that contract from happening. And then finally, this one is the one I think I'm gonna take. This one doubles my rubble building power, which is awesome. So I'll take this one. Okay, now the other thing these does for is give me an in-game goal. If by the end of the game I have laid track twice, I will score 15 points. 
And if I'd taken this one, by the end of the game, I would have scored 10 points if I had built, contributed to building four stations. And this one, I'd get 18 points if I'd laid two track and gotten four, and I still have four rubble. So it's very important to get contracts because over half your points at the end of the game will come from scoring them if you do well. So you don't want to fall too far behind in contracts. But you can't, I mean, you know, if, if you don't get them at first, you'll, you can always get them later. But anyway, so I grabbed a contract and now Jen, she passed, which means she does the surveyor action. We've got two surveyors over here sitting in the first station. And what Jen did, because you, whenever you use, um, use the surveyor action, you get to send your surveyor one to the next station on the mountain. So she's just sent her surveyor from Lanburis, however you pronounce that, to the two viaducts. And what that means is at the end of the game, she'll score one point. Doesn't sound like that big a deal. But if she passes again, at the end of the game, she'd score four points. Or seven points. Or 15 points. But more importantly, if she gets her surveyor all the way to the top of the mountain, 21 points. That's huge. If she passes one, two, three, four, five, six times over the course of the game, she'll score 21 points. So passing is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be a huge game changer by the end, depending on how often you pass. All right. We have done all our workers. And, you know, so they, they've come home. And now we move on to the next phase, which is restocking contracts. If the, if the contract in this space doesn't get taken, it gets grabbed by some mythical other company. This contract is gone. We've lost our chance to get it. Any remaining contracts slide over to make room for two new ones. And more importantly, we check, we check the weather forecast. And what we can see is in two rounds from now, or it's just the three rounds from now, it's going to be sunny. You know what, we already have a sunny. Let's actually, let's, let's randomize this a little bit. Would have been nice that I could have shown you some rain. Come on, there's some rain. This means in two turns from now, it will be rainy. So we're gonna have some rain in the future, which, which helps us uh, you know, make our long-term plans. But that's in the future. Right now, we have to deal with what's the weather gonna be like tomorrow. So what we do is we take this rain that's coming in the future, we put it in this spot, the fog moves up, and the sun moves up to say, hey, tomorrow it's going to be sunny. So what we do is we, we score this right now. The explanation means we do it now. We, it's a sunny day. And if we check the chart, whenever it's sunny, our track and our digging increases by one and two. So our track ability goes up by one and our digging goes up by two. So tomorrow is going to be a very productive day because it'll be sunny. The next day, it's going to be foggy, which means we can't do anything. And the day after that, it's going to be rainy, which means our production will start dropping again. So we have, we have more, some long-term planning we can decide because we know a little bit about what's going to happen with the weather. And now finally, the last thing we do every turn is we restock the stockyard. In a two-player game, we grab six cubes from the bag and put them in the stockyard. And now actually, we're not using the bag because for some reason the game came with a bag that's so tiny only babies could stick their hand into it. So we are using the chicken cup. Now let's grab six cubes, totally randomly. One, two, three, three iron. What else do we get? Ah, all right, come on. Uh, and it's uh, two more iron and a coal. However, I really want an event. Let's see, if you look in here, there's actually quite a few. There's coal, iron, stone, and these little white cubes, these events. And I really want to make an event. Let's, come on, give me an event. We need, I want to show an event to the nice people at home. Nope. There we go. And so we, you know, so this, uh, completely randomly, folks, these are the six cubes we drew. So four more iron is available for collection at the depot. One more coal, so there is a coal that we could try to race for next turn. And more importantly, one event. In this game, Jen and I are not the only companies trying to help build this rail. There is a third virtual company. That's the company that just grabbed this contract um, that is basically out of the game now, this contract. They took it, and they are also now going to do an event. Every time we draw a white cube, they do something. And to see what they do, we check their event track. We put our white cube here and we do a dig event, they're gonna dig. If I had drawn, say of those six, if I had drawn three white cubes, which would be crazy, very unlikely, but if I had drawn three, they would dig, and then they would make the locomotive thing happen, and then they would lay track, you know, and they, and they just do more and more over the course of the game. But they only, I only drew one white cube, so they're gonna dig. So, what does that mean? We check the weather. The weather says that today, um, that our digging is at its absolute maximum, it's four. And now for me and Jen, what that means is whenever we do a dig action, we can score, we can clear four cubes off. But this other company is much better than us. That means they clear out four whole spaces. So it's four, so they clear out all the rubble from space one, space number two, space number three, all of this one, and space number four. So they've just taken out 
Jeez, probably what, 10, 12% of all the rubble in the game in one turn. This is all rubble that Jen and I will never get a chance to get at. And remember, we need rubble. We need it to convert into stone so we can build stations. And we also need it as objectives. You know, if, if I have this objective and I don't have rubble at the end of the game, I won't score my 18 points. So that's a whole bunch of rubble. The other, the, the corporation that's much better than us got. But anyway, so that was the end of that. And now we start with a new round. And Jen is first player, so she starts placing. And I think the first thing she's got to ask herself is, as first player, does she want to grab a contract or does she want to run over there and grab first, or, or I'm sorry, grab the, this space so she can grab the only coal. There's only been two coal in the game so far. Coal is a very valuable resource for reasons I will hopefully show you soon. Uh, now I think she is going to go for a contract so she can have one too. Now it's my turn and I think... I am going to dig. I'm going to choose to do a dig action this turn. And now I got to choose. Am I going to be the first digger or the second digger? And this is an interesting choice, both for me and Jen. Here's why. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose the second space instead of the first space, which means Jen has the opportunity now to be the first person to dig this turn. And there's a good reason she does not want to do that. But if she doesn't, I'll probably put my other guy here and I'll get to do all the digging this turn. So is Jen going to take a chance, is she gonna try and dig some too, or is she gonna do something else? I think she's just gonna let it go. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show why in a second. And instead, she is going to be first and try to grab some resources. Although, it doesn't really matter, or yeah, no it does, it does. I've still got one more worker to place. So does she want to be second and guarantee she holds on to first player? Because otherwise I might take first player. Or does she want to get in and grab the coal? She's going to take a risk and hope. But she's going to go first and she's going to hope I don't take first player from her. And she's right. I'm not going to. I'm going to place my wife. I could place it here, which means I get first player and some more resources. But I am going to do more digging because Jen didn't go there. We placed our workers, now let's do them. And we'll show the interesting stuff that happened here. First of all, Jen gets three more resources and she will take the only coal. And I believe she will take two more iron. So she's building up a lot of iron over here in her resource pool. Okay. And now me, I'm going to dig. I get to do two dig actions, which means I get to do eight. I get to dig up eight rubble. However, remember, I've got my special one-time thing. Whenever you take the excavate action this round, take double the number of rubble cubes. Work rate uh, plus any bonuses. So instead of taking up eight, I'm going to pick up, let's see, is it, do I pick up 12 or 16? Do I double both of them or I double only one? I can never remember this. And I don't remember, let's see, does the rules actually say, sorry, I should have, well, I didn't know this card was going to come up. Let's see, this is, place the indicate, no, where, where is that? The bonus for increased rubble collection. Ah, uh, trains, excavate, and that's what he does. Oh, for life, I do not remember. All right, so this is, these are the bonuses at the end of the contract cards. Contract completed, scoring, end of game, restock. Oh, for the life of me, I do not remember. But you know what? It says very, very clearly that when I do this, it's going to double the work rate. So I'm going to tap this to indicate that I'm choosing double work rate, which means I, not only will I pick up eight cubes, it'll be 16. Now, I might be wrong. It might be 12. If so, I'll put a note that I got this wrong. But I think it means I get 16 cubes, which means I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cubes. I got a ton of cubes. Now, let me tell you, before I pick them all up, Oh, my sweet, sweet bounty. Why this was a tough choice for Jen. Because uh, the reason I didn't take the first space, because I, you know, I wanted to ensure that I picked up these two cubes. Because whoever picks up these cubes is going to immediately score. Normally, the rubble doesn't get you anything. But if you clear cubes out of a station, it would get me three points. Two points for th two cubes get me three points. That's a great return. So I wanted to be the one who did that. But... If I'd gone first, oh, you know what? Am I gonna? Yeah, if I'd gone first, then Jen might have gotten second, and then I might have grabbed, you know, say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'd, or, you know, no, I'm sorry. I would grab these eight, because I would have only placed one worker down here. You know, I'm sorry. I should describe this a little bit better. Say I had been, hey, I wanna go first. And then Jen said, oh, yeah? Well, I'll go second. Then what would have happened is I would have either taken four, or eight cubes, 
depending. But like, I probably would have used my card and I would have taken eight. So I would have gotten all these. And then um, Jen, who went second, would have been able to profit from my labor and would have been the one to get the three points for taking these cubes. Because whoever takes those cubes gets it. And more to the point, if I had taken one of the cubes and Jen took the last one, she's the one who gets the points. So player order matters hugely here. Now it didn't matter. She took a contract, so I got to do both. So I got 16 cubes. But that is why, let's see, what was it? It was 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's a lot of rubble I just got. But I can never double my output again, unless I get another card that lets me do it. And that was a choice for Jen. Did she want to, like, she knew, it was really more a choice for me. Because if I had taken the first spot, then Jen would have benefited from that station. So that's why I took the second spot. And then Jen had to decide, well, I guess I could get the first spot, but she knew I was gonna get a lot of rubble anyway. So she took the opportunity to do other stuff. So anyway, that was my whole turn, just getting a ton of rubble, clearing a lot of spaces out. And now over to Jen, she gets a contract. Hmm, and let's see. Here's this one again that lets you stop contract. I don't think she's gonna do that. Does she want the one that lets her lay extra track or the one that lets her build with one less stone than normal? It makes it cheaper to build. I think she will choose the one that lets her lay more track. Uh. Well, see, she would like to lay track and, you know, you know, and she'd like to do it next turn because I've cleared out all these spaces. A track could be laid now. But we know that tomorrow it's going to be foggy. So she won't get a chance to lay track tomorrow. And the turn after that, track is going to go from two to one. All the more reason because we might go through a whole spell of getting nothing but rain. It might be very slow. So she will take this one to make her more affection at uh, laying track. Okay. And so that was her last action. She got a contract. I did two digs. And she got some more resources. So at the end of all that... As always, we clear out the contracts. This one's gone away, this slides over, new contracts come out. It's gonna be sunny, so hey, it is gonna turn around and be sunny again. But for next round, since it's foggy, we cannot do any digging, nor can we lay any track, because it'd be too dangerous. Uh, it gets very, it's pea soup up there. It'd just be impossible to do that labor. So for the next turn, no digging and no track laying will go which is too bad because Jen would love to take advantage of that track laying before the, before the rain comes and it you know, gets less efficient. So she might not lay the track next turn. She might wait till the following turn when it's sunny so she would get two, three, but that's the decision she'll make in the future. So, and now finally we draw and we see if there's gonna be another event and whatever else comes out. Let's see, uh, one, two, two stone and what's it? Come on, give us an event. Uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and guaranteed draw. Let's see, one, two, three. So this is what came out. And actually, you know, I'm gonna draw two events just so you can, because we're about to end the first two. So this is what came out. <laughs> totally uh, by chance. I swear I didn't rig it. So some, and now two events came out. So both of these events are gonna happen. First one, nice and easy. Players now have the ability to build trains. We couldn't do it before now, but now if we have an iron bar, it requires either one or two iron bars. We can put a worker here, which would let us build one of these trains. This one requires two iron bars. This one requires one. And all the trains give us special abilities. Uh, you know, this one, for instance, makes it cheaper to convert iron into steel rails or, you know, steel bars. This one is the same as that bonus gen just got where it lets you lay an extra track. This one lets you take an extra cube. So they all give you special abilities. The other thing, the trains let you do is, at the beginning of your turn, if you pay a coal, you can send the train from wherever we are back down the mountain to get yourself a third worker. So once you have a train, if you have coal, you can spend a coal every turn and have three workers instead of two because you picked them up from the pub. So the other event, the guy, is going to lay some track himself. And now, while we are very safety conscious because of the fog, we won't do any building, he still will. He is always at the um, peak of efficiency. So we come over here to look at the lay track. There's two track that can be laid. So he lays both of these track. And that means that is three points and, or two points and three points that Jen and I cannot score because he's laid them. And as you see, the game will play itself. Over time, it will just take care of stuff. So we are in a race not only with each other, but with the game to try and score points. This is five points we'll never get. All that rubble, we'll never get it now because this guy's going. And here's the interesting thing. 
In most games, you want to hoard a lot of resources. You want to get a whole bunch of resources before you convert them because that means you'll be at the peak efficiency. But the more resources you hoard, the more likely it is that events will come out. And the more often events come out, the more quickly you lose the opportunity to use those resources. So it's a really beautiful push-pull this game has of, well, you want to hoard, you want to be efficient, but sometimes you just got to make a move right now because the game pretty much encourages it. So anyway, that was the second round. And now in the third round, Jen's still first player. She's got her two workers. She, what would she do this turn? Well, she'd like to lay track, but she can't. I think now that trains are out, she's going to want to get an iron bar so that she can build a truck. So as first player, while she could grab another contract, she's gonna say, to heck with that, the only way you can get iron bar, she's gonna do a conversion. And so that means I cannot do a conversion now, which means this turn I cannot get a train. And so that means I probably will say, well, then I'm gonna get another contract. And then Jen will say, well, I'm gonna get some more resources. Now, although interestingly, there's no iron, here, so she might as well take the second space to hold on to first player because it doesn't have to be the first to get in there. And then finally, I'll say, Ugh! well, I can still get more resources because I eventually need iron to make bars so that I can get my own. Or, let's see, it's a shame too because if I could have converted, I could have converted all this rubble into stone so that I could start building and scoring points on all these spaces on these two stations. There's two stations we could build at now. <sighs> but Jen, going first, she got all the good stuff. So I think I will just get some more resources for the future. And we'll just run through this really quick. So I'm going to grab three iron. Or no, actually, I'm going to grab two iron. Because that means I've got the three I need to make a bar. I may grab two iron and one stone. Does so that mean I've got two stone? Which means two stone would score me four points right here. Now, and you know, these score things are way out of whack. Some are really awesome. Two for four is great compared to later on where you get one for one. So it's a race to get the best of the best return of these as well because you know they, they get better and better. So anyway, so that's my stuff. And then Jen, she's just going to grab three more iron. And then nobody digs. And now Jen gets to convert. She's going to take one, two, three, four, five, six of her iron. And now unfortunately, oops, six of her iron. If she had if she had one more iron, she could do another conversion. If she had any rubble, she could do a conversion. Because when you go here, you get to do three conversions. But Jen is only going to do two. She's a little bit less efficient, but she wanted to get in there before I did. So she is getting two iron bars. Okay. Oh. Oh, actually, I did this wrong. What Jen really wanted to do, sorry, let me take this back. Instead of, even more unofficially, instead of Jen having tried to hold on to first player, she came over here. Her, second, her first worker was to convert, and her second worker was to build the train. Which means I, uh, for my last placement, I could have grabbed first player, which I did. So, this is actually the layout we did. It was a little bit smarter. So, okay, we did this. In addition to my resources, I also grabbed first player. And then Jen did her conversion. Now that means she only got to make one bar. Because since she didn't get any more iron, she didn't get to do two of her three conversions. She wasted. Very inefficient. But when you only have two workers, sometimes you have to make those choices. We move on, and now with her second worker, she gets to build. She's going to take that one bar she just made, and she is going to buy the first rail, the first car of the game. And now, interestingly, the, 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 the cars that come out are random too. Every single one of them requires two. Two, 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 two. This is the only one in the game that only requires one. So Jen, again, by going first, got the cheapest car she could. It was less efficient on a conversion, but it guaranteed her first dibs. And that's the, that's the theme of this game. Do you go for long-term plans, or do you say, heck with that, strike while the iron is hot, because that's it's always very tempting. So she's grabbed her first rail, and by the way, it came with two coal. So that means, really, for the next three turns, for the next three turns, she can spend a coal and have three workers instead of two. So that's gonna give her a huge boost. She was inefficient in her uh, conversion, but three turns in a row, where I, she gets more actions than me. And then finally, I grab another contract. Let's see. After all of the excavations have been resolved, you can excavate completely the next space. So this basically, even if I don't excavate, this lets me excavate for free. This one uh, lets me do a track lay for you. Even if I don't put a worker there, I can do a track lay for free. And this one makes it cheaper to build. I'm gonna go for this one because I'm starting to save up stone and I'd like to use my stone to do a build in the future. So that was the contract I got. We're done with that. So no contract disappears, these ones go away, new one comes out, it's gonna be sunny. 
hey, it's gonna be sunny in the future. But for tomorrow, uh, we can only lay one track a turn and we can only dig three. But if we wait a little while, it's gonna be a long, uninterrupted, sunny day. So, you know, digging and laying track is gonna be huge in the future. And now, this time I won't cheat. Let's see what the dummy player actually gets. Four or five. Oh, I will cheat, come on. Uh, and hey, it's another event, what do you know? Okay, now I should say I'm cheating to get all these events because I really want to show them in this video. But you know, it's perfectly reasonable that some games, you might go three, four, five rounds before the other player ever gets off the ground. And that means players are scrambling for these early things. But in this game, because I'm cheating, the, the, the dummy player got off to a really strong start, but he cleared out a lot of stuff and gave us different opportunities. But anyway, he did one event. Okay, so I'm sorry, there's no coal came out. So coal is at a premium. I've only got one and Jen's got three, but there's lots of iron and stone. However, the new event happens, which means the dummy player is gonna do two things. First of all, they're gonna do a build action, and this is painful for me. That means I take one of the dummy discs and I put it here, which means this entire station has been completed. It's 100% built, and that means neither Jen nor I will get to score any of these points. He built them all. Um, and the other thing is, you'll notice one, two, three, cubes one, two, and three go back in the bag and therefore start upping the chance of him doing more events. Okay, oh, I forgot one thing, by the way. When I cleared out, I remember I cleared out the rubble here, I should have put my marker here to indicate that I score these points at the end of the game. Forgot about that, so that's very important. And that, that this mark scores too. It means I score three points at the end of the game, and I'll, it also means I've got one, I've, I've, got, I've got proof that I have actually constructed. Oh wait, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, no. This marker would also be proof that I would have done um, you know, one construction on a train station. But anyway, that's for later on in the game. And now it's the next turn. I'm first player. Uh, you know, we start placing our workers. But before we do, Jen pays one of her coal to get her third worker. So Jen's got three workers to my two. And we'll see what happens. But to see what happens, you'll have to watch the extended run through, which what you can do if you press the button that's on the screen right now. Or alternatively, you can press the other button and hear final thoughts if you just like to hear me wax rhapsodic about the game. Either way, it's your choice in five, four, Three, two, one. Thanks, everybody.